And since there's no place to go, let's see if the XJR will go. Probably not. Hello and welcome to a very wintry Jiggly Shed Motors. I've got my big jacket on. You know it's cold when I've got my big jacket on. Anyway, um, I was going to have a quick look at the engine on the XJR 1300 before I kind of jump into anything else on this bike. Basically, I don't really know what condition the engine's in. I haven't heard it run, I haven't heard it turn. I have absolutely no way of knowing. So, given the rest of the condition of the bike, or the condition of the rest of the bike, I should say, I'm not going to hold my breath, but let's have a wee investigation. All right, something that's immediately worrying me is the fact that I can't see any oil in the oil sight glass in the side of the crankcase here, so that's not a great indication. Um, I know that this bike hasn't been run in about 10 years and having it sat with potentially no oil in it might not be fantastic, but I guess the only thing to do is to pull a drain plug and see if anything comes out and see what condition anything that comes out is in, if anything comes out. not very tight. That suggests to me that oil's been drained already. Okay. Right. Let's inspect the oil on my hands. It's actually... It's not too bad. It's not black or gunky or anything. Um, and that's straight out the sump. So... That bodes well, unless it's had oil poured into it and then never run. That could also could also be the case, but interesting. It also, it doesn't smell too petrolly or anything. Sometimes, if your oil comes out and it stinks of petrol, um, you could be looking at something like worn-out piston rings or wearing piston rings, where basically some exhaust gases or even petrol are getting through the rings and into the crankcase um, but it just smells like oil so like I say unless there was fresh oil dumped into it um, and then not run uh, that's a, a reasonable indication Okay, so the sight glass, the oil sight glass is now just over halfway full. So hopefully that means the engine has a decent amount of oil in it now. Uh, it's confidence inspiring that some oil did come out of the sump when I took the plug off because it means that it's not been stored without oil in it. Um, or at least not without any oil in it. Uh, and that kind of should hopefully preserve the, in the internals of the engine fingers crossed. The next thing I want to do is take the spark plugs out and I'll show you a cool new tool that I bought to have a wee look inside the cylinders. So I picked this up on uh, a well-known shopping site um, and basically it's a bore scope. So it's got little LED lights on it and it connects via Wi-Fi to your phone. So I've got my phone sat beside me. Uh, I'm recording the images so I'll stick them on the screen just now. Uh, and basically I'm hoping that this will give me a wee view inside the cylinders. Uh, so well, let's try it out. They don't look in too bad shape at all. There's a bit of carbon deposits, but you can just about see the 
cross hatching on the cylinder walls. And the actual piston looks okay. Okay, next up, let's check out the next one. Does not look as clean, does it? Oh dear, oh dear. That is a very wet piston. Question is, what is that? That is soaking. Well, that does not fill me with joy. Okay. Time to check out the other side. Not happy. So this piston looks in reasonable condition. A bit sooty on one side. Nothing wild. You can see the cross hatching on the cylinders. Quite sooty at the back there. You see the valves are open. So that's not great. Probably means that um, it's been allowed to open to the elements. Let's have a look at the next cylinder. Okay, even more sooty this time. Actually not too bad condition wise. Again, see the valves are open. Okay, exploratory mission over with regards to the cylinders. Um, I'm going to pull the carbs off next and see if I can see a little bit into the intakes um, and try and gauge what got into that cylinder. Um, it's a bit confusing. It looks pretty wet, but it doesn't smell. It doesn't smell fuel. I guess it smells like water, but I'm not entirely sure how water would have gone into that cylinder because the, uh, uh, the spark plug was in tight enough, so yeah, confusing. Okay, so next up I'm going to use the borescope again just to have a look at the intakes and the exhausts. Um, not holding out much hope, but uh, let's have a look. Well immediately I can see rust on that valve stem, a little bit on the other one as well. And if we go a bit further in, yeah that's not a happy valve. A smidge better, but... Not great. Next cylinder, let's have a look. That's a bit more what I wanted to see really. Clean valve stem, likewise, that looks nice. That's interesting because this is the cylinder that the piston is absolutely disgusting on. Next one, a wee bit of rust corrosion around the valve guide. Valve looks okay. Tiny dot of rust there. And the last cylinder. That's a bit better. That looks nice and shiny to me. Next one along. Likewise, in decent condition. So that's reasonable. The valve is a bit mucky, but. Let's have a look at the exhausts then. Okay. Exhaust side. Similarly sooty and a bit rusty. Moving along. Whoa! What is this rubbish? Some kind of watery, oily deposit. Similar to the stuff that was on top of the piston. You see the valve seat there is really rusty. There's no way that that's making a good seal. Not too bad. And the last one, not similarly, not terrible. It's actually reasonably clean for an exhaust valve. Well, I had kind of secret desires to try and turn the engine over with the starter motor, uh, just 
putting power straight into the starter motor, but to be honest, I mean, seeing the condition of that cylinder there, I'm not really inclined to do that. Uh, I think that's cylinder number three. Not really inclined to do that purely because I don't really know what that is in there. It's a bit perplexing and I don't really want to make any damage worse by turning the engine over at speed. So I'm going to try turning it over by hand and just get a feel for what that's like. And if um, if it all says no, then I'll just stop. And then, um, I mean, it's going to have a, a top end rebuild. I think that's pretty much the name um, definitely needs the valves lapped and all that, and valves cleaned and things. Uh, well, you know, it seems silly to do all that and not do the full top end and piston rings and things. So um, I kind of did resign myself to that probably being the case, but that kind of confirms it. So hey, you know, I'm not, I'm not sad, but uh, I'm not ecstatic either. <laughs> It's actually turning over quite smoothly. God knows how. Hmm. All right, so that's where I'm gonna leave it today. Um, I have a vague better idea of what neck the engine's in. Uh, it's not disastrous. It does turn over fairly smoothly, surprisingly, but having had a look into the bores, um, they don't look amazing and the valve stems definitely look a little bit rusty in some of the cylinders so that all needs rectified there's no point in putting this bike together um with you know skipping corners like that so uh, i mean the engine's going to come out at some point anyway um but that's basically made my mind up for me um going to get a top end rebuild and uh, hoping that there are no horror shows in the bottom end that rear their head so um it should be a fairly straightforward job but Either way, that's, uh, well, it's something to think about anyway. So the next job really for me is to forget about the engine and the running side of it and start thinking a little bit about the cosmetics. Uh, so, you know, namely the, the, the subframe, that's kind of going to need to get modified and I'm still swithering over exactly what I'm going to do, but I've got a vague idea. So I'll, um, I'll hopefully be able to show you that in the next episode to get the angle grinder out. Uh, it's always fun. It's always, uh, it's always a fun stage in a sort of custom bike build is when you start chopping and grinding so um, yeah I'll, I'll relieve my stress on that um, I think that I did know basically in the, in the deepest parts of my heart that that this engine was uh, going to throw up some problems and so far it has I've also just on the way around noticed a couple of missing bolts and one bolt that's clearly been stripped and they've just poked a bolt through it and then up from the other side so um, there's various repairs to be done uh, as we dent uh, neck out of one of the fins as well so yeah you know um, it's all stuff that this engine will need to work on but at the end of the day uh, it's going to all get stripped down and, and probably blasted anyway and um, it's been rattle can silver I think at some point which is looking a bit tired so <laughs> yeah you know we'll, we'll get there but um, yeah I, I have a better idea now of uh, what nick it's in um, and I can probably just park that for the time being and start thinking about building the rest of the bike and then um, dive into the engine when that's done. Well on that note I'm going to love you and leave you. Uh, I will hopefully see you in the next episode where we'll be getting the angle grinder out and start chopping some things off this bike. Start to get a feel for what it's going to, for what shape it's going to take. So that's exciting. I'm looking forward to that. Um, as usual please do give me a like, leave me a comment and keep on subscribing. Uh, like I said last time, to hit that 1000 mark is so cool and uh, just makes me want to grow more. Uh, a total like whore, as I described myself, uh, or subscriber whore, uh, as I described myself the other night um, on, a, on an Instagram live. But no, it's, it's, it's cool just to, to share this journey with you guys and um, I hope you're as excited as I am to see this bike come together because it's, I think it's going to be a cool bike. Um, I'm pretty excited to see what I can do with it. and really push my limits looking up just every time I look at it I think of something else cool that I can do about it and all these different things that I'm gonna fabricate and craft and yeah no it's it, it definitely gets me excited again um, 
I kind of had a bit of a slump over that kind of Christmas and New Year period with motivation, but this is definitely putting me on the up. So yeah, I hope uh, I hope you're excited about it too. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, I'll see you in a bit. Goodbye. Oh dear. What is that? Shit. Well, that does not fill me with joy.